Good morning all, thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. It's September the 24th today. Our readings will come from Isaiah chapters 43 to 45, Ephesians chapter 3, and Proverbs chapter 24. We'll start that today. And although we've finished the book of Psalms in our daily Bible readings, today I encourage you to read Psalm chapter 68, verses 1 to 18, a Psalm of David. I'll be reading from the Berean Standard Bible. Now let's ask God for his blessing. Lord God, please bless this reading of your word to me and to those who are following along. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, before we go into the Old Testament, let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are fellow heirs, fellow members of the body, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. Became... I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, given me through the working of his power. Though I am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to illuminate for everyone the stewardship of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His purpose was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may enter God's presence with boldness and confidence. So I ask you not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I ask that out of the riches of his glory, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Then you, being rooted and grounded in love, will have power together with all the saints, to comprehend the length and width and height and depth of the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. All right, let's continue in Ephesians chapter 4 tomorrow. For now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 43, starting in verse 14. It says, Thus is the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all as fugitives, even the Chaldeans and the ships in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel and your King. Thus is the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the surging waters, who brings out the chariots and horses, the armies and warriors together, to lie down, never to rise again, to be extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Do not call to mind the former things. Pay no attention to the things of old. Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I provide water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people I formed for myself will declare my praise. But you have not called on me, O Jacob, because you have grown weary of me, O Israel. 
You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened your, you with offerings, nor wearied you with frankincense. You have not bought me sweet cane with your silver, nor satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins, you have wearied me with your iniquities. I, yes, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and remembers your sins no more. Remind me, let us argue the matter together. State your case, so that you may be vindicated. Your first father sinned, and your spokesman rebelled against me, so I will disgrace the princes of your sanctuary, and I will devote Jacob to destruction and Israel to reproach. Chapter 44 But now listen, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is the word of the Lord your Maker, who formed you from the womb and who will help you. Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water on the thirsty land and currents on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. They will sprout among the grass like willows by flowing streams. One will say, I belong to the Lord. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. And still another will write on his hand, The Lord's, and will take the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King and Redeemer of Israel, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last, and there is no God but me. Who then is like me? Let him say so. Let him declare his case before me, since I established an ancient people. Let him foretell the things to come and what is to take place. Do not tremble or fear. Have I not told you and declared it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God but me? There is no other rock. I know not one. All makers of idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Their witnesses fail to see or comprehend, so they are put to shame. Who fashions a god or casts an idol which profits him nothing? Behold, all his companions will be put to shame, for the craftsmen themselves are only human. Let them all assemble and take their stand. They will all be brought to terror and shame. The blacks. The blacksmith takes a tool and labors over the coals. He fashions an idol with hammers and forges it with his strong arms. Yet he grows hungry and loses his strength. He fails to drink water and grows faint. The woodworker extends a measuring line. He marks it out with a stylus. He shapes it with chisels and outlines it with a compass. He fashions it in the likeness of man, like man in all his glory, that it may dwell in a shrine. He cuts down cedars or retrieves a cypress or oak. He lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a laurel and the rain makes it grow. It serves as fuel for man. He takes some of it to warm himself and he kindles a fire and bakes his bread. He even fashions it into a god and worships it. He makes an idol and bows down to it. He burns half of it in the fire and he roasts meat on that other half. On that half. He eats the roast and is satisfied. Indeed, he warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm, I see the fire. From the rest he makes a god, his graven image. He bows down to it and worships it. He prays to it and says, Save me, for you are my god. They do not comprehend or discern. For he has shut their eyes so they cannot see, and closed their minds so they cannot understand. And no one considers in his heart, no one has the knowledge or insight to say, I burned half of it in the fire, and I baked bread on its coals, I roasted meat and I ate. Shall I make something detestable with the rest of it? Shall I bow down to a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. His deluded heart has led him astray, and he cannot deliver himself or say, Is not this thing in my right hand a lie? Remember these things, O Jacob, for you are my servant, O Israel. I have made you, and you are my servant. O Israel, I will never forget you. I have blotted out your transgressions like a cloud, and your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing for joy, O heavens, for the Lord has done this. Shout aloud, O depths of the earth. 
Break forth in song, O mountains, you forests, and all you trees. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and revealed his glory in Israel. Thus is the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who has made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who by myself spread out the earth, who foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of diviners, diviners who confounds the wise and turns their knowledge into nonsense, who confirms the message of his servant and fulfills the counsel of his messengers, who says of Jerusalem, She will be inhabited, and of the cities of Judah. They will be rebuilt, and I will restore their ruins. Who says to the depths of the sea, Be dry, and I will dry up your currents. Who says of Cyrus, My shepherd will fulfill all that I desire. Who says of Jerusalem, she will be rebuilt, and of the temple, let its foundation be laid. Finally, chapter 45. This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, to disarm kings, to open the doors before him, so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and level the mountains, I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, and Israel, my chosen one, I call you by name. I have given you a title of honor, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God but me. I will equip you for battle though you have not known me, so that all may know, from where the sun rises to where it sets, that there is none but me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I bring prosperity and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drip down, O heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open up that salvation may sprout, and righteousness spring up with it. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who quarrels with his maker, one clay pot among many. Does the clay ask the potter, what are you making? Does your work say he has no hands? Woe to him who says to his father, what have you begotten? Or to his mother, what have you brought forth? Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 24. We finished 23 yesterday, so we're starting in 24 today. Let's read verses 1 and 2. These are saying number 20. Do not envy wicked men or desire their company, for their hearts devise violence and their lips declare trouble. And with that being read, we finished today's Bible reading. Tune in tomorrow, September the 25th, as we continue in the ninth month of our one-year Bible reading plan. We're almost in the 10th month. Uh, we're almost in October. Praise the Lord. Tune in tomorrow, and as we close today, we pray, come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen.